Before we were starting the session, I was commenting to some of our guests that this uh, UN General Assembly is, is definitely uh, this week every year in uh, New York is a kind of the second US, uh, second New York City Marathon. And for the folks here from Missions, I commend you for your stamina, and uh, I just don't know how, how you do it. Um, and I think that the post-2015 development agenda and the SDG discussion is going to be another marathon that we're just starting to cross the, cross the starting line on. Well, at the beginning of the session, Carrie asked us a couple of questions which we haven't answered. So I'm going to try to answer them a little bit anyway. Um, and she asked us how greener growth can be brought into the post-2015 development agenda and where does business fit in. So I think the first point I would make is that we've already made some steps in the right direction towards answering that question. I mean, what was just discussed, that we're in a discussion now that brings all the countries to the table and does not see the world as either OECD or non-OECD. I mean, I think that's already taking us part of the way towards the integration of, of green growth and even the understanding that that is, is going to be part of and integral to the post-2015 development agenda. Um, I think that the UN, although most people don't see this, the fact that the UN is starting to think outside of its box and looking at partnerships, things like the access to sustainable, sustainable energy for all and other partnerships, which, you know, 10 years ago, 20 years ago was kind of not quite anathema, but somehow would be seen as running contrary to the intergovernmental nature of, of the UN and would not be seen as credible. And now we have these partnerships, which are really recognized as major contributions. So I think the fact that we have partnerships uh, squarely on the table is another step in that direction. The fact that we're engaging business so much already um, in the high-level panel report, there was excellent outreach um, done by the, the, the SG's office and then by the business people who were tapped. They undertook many, many consultations. And that's just the beginning, but that's certainly critical to bringing green growth considerations into the post-2015 development agenda. The fact that in the um, open-ended working group on sustainable development goals, there's been a lot of discussion already on the importance of governance and infrastructure and economic considerations, which we definitely did not get beyond just sort of the typical means of implementation discussions in the first Rio or in Johannesburg. Again, it seems like we're, we're, we're making steps in the right direction, and if we continue on all of those points, we we're already um, off to a good start. But of course, there's a lot more we need to do. I mean, still, I think we need to bring more economic partners to the table, both from intergovernmental institutions and from expertise, like some of the folks that are here in the room. Um, I mean, we have an opportunity to do that, I think, in November when the OWG SDGs takes up the big economic cluster of issues somehow in three days. Not quite sure how that's going to happen, but. Um, in any event, um, there's an opportunity there, and the group that uh, uh, was just mentioned on financing for development, the experts group, that's another great opportunity for us to bring more economic partners to the table. We've been talking a lot about metrics, and it's also not, not having too many metrics. Um, being an OECD, following OECD a lot, um, reading OECD reports and seeing how many metrics and indicators are out there, I mean, we could definitely drown um, and, and, and overwhelm ourselves with too much um, that's being measured. So I would say that being selective, as, as Paula uh, was telling us to do at the beginning, is, is really important. Um, and then when we have those metrics and we brought those partners to the table, whether they're governmental or non-governmental or business from the economic side, those things actually have to be recognized and reflected. I mean, we have a lot of expertise here in the room, and we've had many business people weighing in, and um, more often than not, uh, that input isn't fully reflected. And again, um, kudos to the high-level panel for having reflected that, and if we could just continue to have that kind of uh, incorporation, let's say, of, of other views that are more economically oriented, it'll help us bring the both the business community into the discussion of post-2015 and also to bring green growth more into the picture. Um, Everything can hop, happen top down, so we definitely have to find the right balance between national uh, and international levels of implementation. And I mean, at least we're looking at national levels of implementation this time around, and that's critically important. Um, and we, we hope that we can, you know, 
contribute more on this front as well as on the synergy between the national and international levels of, of action that's going to be needed because it all can't come from the UN, um, that's for sure. Um, when we're talking about difficult issues like trade or IPR, I think we, we have to recast the discussion more around the carrots rather than the sticks. I mean, we had the negotiation or the commitment in the uh, APEC to reduce and remove tariffs on environmental goods and services. That's a s situation where you actually had a benefit coming from trade, which actually is helpful to the further dissemination of environmental goods and services. Is it everything? Is it perfect? No, but it's it's good. For once, it's not a, a WTO dispute that we're talking about. And so more things like that I think we can we can think about. And then I guess the last two are very related, and that is that we, we do have to think economy-wide and business-wide. And when I say business-wide, it's not just all sectors, but we have to bring many more voices from developing countries, from SMEs. Um, those, those are critically important to the supply and value chains. They're critically important to greening growth for the majority of the business community and certainly in the developing countries that you know, have to see their situation bettered economically, socially, and environmentally. So that's my way of ask, answering, at least in part, Carrie's question. And I think this is going to be a, a, a good ongoing conversation because it is absolutely crucial and, and I think indispensable to the post-2015 development agenda that we do bring in green growth and that businesses at the table, both in the um, design of the policies and the targets and the metrics, but also in the implementation. And I'd just like to add my thanks to everyone who put this meeting together, um, to Brian, to uh, our wonderful hosts at Pfizer, to all the speakers who have come to join us. Um, maybe we gave them a good excuse to get away from the UN for a few minutes, so <laughs> we're happy to do that for them. Um, to all the staff at USCIB, Kiryev Tekova, and our wonderful team, Jess Birdie, Rachel Spence, thank you so much for working overtime. Um, and to thank all of you for your attention. And with that, close the meeting and hope we can stay in touch. We'll be doing more of these meetings and we'd really value keeping the conversation going with all of you. Thank you.